Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you can um, hear me and see my screen as well. Uh, <clears throat> I, welcome you, I welcome you all to the panel discussion on um, SAP DevOps. Uh, I hope you are all um, staying safe. And thank you for taking time today to attend this discussion. So we have an elite panel. Uh, let me first introduce myself. I am Niranjan. I'm the founder CEO of ReleaseOwl. Um, ReleaseOwl is a cloud native DevOps platform that is designed exclusively for SAP applications. So we have uh, uh, elite members today, um, Helen Selvanathan uh, from um, Partner Strategy, and we have Giant uh, leading the SAP Academy. So um, Helen, uh, let's get started with you. A quick note about you for the audience. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Niranjan, for that quick intro. Um, I'm glad to be part of um, this session, and I'm glad that I can do a quick welcome and um, appreciate uh, Release Owl and the whole management team for inviting me. And uh, with that, I just do a quick intro that I'm responsible for the software partners go to market for Asia Pacific and Japan, um, responsible for also looking at business development for these types of partners who build, who extend and innovate solutions on SAP technology. And uh, with that, I just want to move on uh, to, to Niranjan, do you want me to introduce Jayant or Jayant? Uh, I will let Jayant um, introduce himself. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Naranjan. Thanks, Helen. Uh, it's wonderful being here among uh, friends. Uh, I'm Jayant. I'm the Chief Development Architect and Director at SAP Academy for Engineering. Uh, my chief role is to build programs and execute programs for our 35,000 engineers. Um, we cover programs ranging from the youngest engineers to the senior most leaders in the organization. Niranjan, over to you. What? Wonderful. Um, let's start with um, Helen. So Helen has been helping us with go to market um, for release all and providing us all the required support. And we thought um, it's a great opportunity um, for Helen to share uh, some of the partner initiatives uh, and how is SAP uh, progressing with partners. So, uh, so Helen, uh, so the, the way we go about this, Helen will introduce us on the partner strategy and Jayant um, uh, from the academy initiative will talk us through about the outlook of DevOps in SAP. And then I'll walk through some of the capabilities of release order. So um, Helen, why don't you get started? You are the front face of us. Thank you. Um, Maybe somebody, yes, great. I was just about to ask about a progression of the slide. So thank you everyone. Um, uh, I know it's late in the evening for you just as it is for me here in Malaysia. So with that, um, I've done a quick intro. So let's move on to the next slide where I just wanna quickly share with you something um, that we did, we as an SAP together with IDC, a paper uh, in 2019, I think it was done late 2019, where we worked with IDC to provide a quick analysis to partners. So one of the key things that we do also, we share reports as such, which are publicly available uh, for partners and for customers. And in one of the comments that most analysts were commonly predicting that by 2022, which is not too far away for us, that at least $1.8 trillion will be invested in um, you know, AR in AI and robotics. And, and what are we trying to do at SAP? We're looking for partners such as Release Owl who work on the DevOps, DevOps piece and um, how they can actually support customers, um, not just SAP customers, but net new customers as well, and take these forward, um, you know, collaborating with us in the many initiatives that we do. And in that same report, uh, it was also mentioned that 60% of Global GDP will be digitized with um, growth in, in 
literally every industry, not just in a particular industry, but in every industry. And these will cut across uh, APJ as well as, uh, you know, not just in India, but across Asia, Asia Pacific and Japan. Next slide. So one of the key things that we do, which we also did with Release Owl was to support partners to go forward. And we have a digital platform known as SAP Store, where you may check this out later. Uh, maybe Niranjan and the team can share with you the link uh, where Release Owl has put uh, their solution and their capacity onto our digital platform. Now, who leverages this digital platform? The 440,000 um, customers that we have across globally and uh, even our own field team, right? When they're looking for DevOps capability, they will use this digital platform to search for such partners as Release Owl. And we have started um, pushing out information of partners like Release Owl to global customers as well. And um, I think late last year, we did a press release and I'm glad to say that, you know, Release Owl said, Howl has done many things to go forward and support customers. Um, and how do we work closely with partners like Release Owl? So if you go to the next slide, there are three key things that we do with partners. Um, when they start building their solution, generally we give them a progression path. You know, you could start with a particular technology um, and it can be riding on SAP Cloud Platform. And uh, we then uh, encourage our partners to extend their solution to many other uh, possible solutions that SAP itself have, for example, HXM, or even our intelligence span management, and of course, our traditional ERP concepts as well. And then also there are uh, opportunities for partners to infuse. Um, so these three components are crucial to any organization that wants to have a long-term stickiness and, and be with us in our partner innovation journey. And I also must say that, you know, with SAP's business technology platform, um, which I think many of you would have known by now, the platform for the intelligent enterprise customers, uh, we make sure that partners that we work with have an opportunity to integrate into that same platform and how um, connected business processes become part of the rapid implementation and, and taking time to market with customers. So um, with that, uh, if we move on to the next slide, I just want to, um, yeah, this is a, just a screenshot of the same uh, digital marketplace that I shared about. It's known as SAP Store, it got rebranded early this year. And this is where you will also find more information about Release Owl. Uh, we ask you to check it out because you get lots of information and um, it is crucial that you know what Release Owl can do for you and to enhance your tran digital transformation as well. Um, next slide. Right, this is um, literally, you know, a closing slide that I wanted to talk about how jointly with partners we are transforming the world. And it's just not on the technology side. It's also things that we do around sustainability, green environment, and we will, we will generally get partners involved so that partners can become a key component of this triangulation that we do with customers, SAP and the partners. So um, I will say thank you again to Niranjan and team. And if there's any further questions, I will stay on the line, but anything technical, um, Jayant is here also to help you. And with that, thank you, Niranjan. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Thank you very much. Uh, that was an insightful, uh, insightful uh, information from you. No doubt um, SAP is in the middle of a phenomenal transition uh, from on-prem to cloud. And when customers move from uh, on-prem to cloud, uh, the importance of change management, the importance of ensuring that there is no regression, um, the speed of change, um, this is where DevOps will play a significant role uh, in this migration journey of customers and not just migration, even those customers who are developing on uh, directly on cloud, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a big change from an annual release on an on-premise system to a monthly, weekly, or even daily release. And it, it is possible, um, definitely. 
uh, on SAP with a strong um, DevOps tooling ground. Now um, yeah, we are here to help you, so yeah, we look sure. forward to greater <laughs> things together. Yeah, sure. And um, DevOps is not just about um, tooling; it is also about education, culture, and methodology. And um, always, Academy SAP Academy has been at the forefront in some of these initiatives and some of these transformation efforts. And that is where um, we have requested um, Jayant to be um, on this panel to talk about um, some of the outlook um, of DevOps um, uh, and SAP in 2021. So Jayant, um, if you are uh, ready, we will get started yeah. with you. Sure. Thanks, Niranjan. Thanks for uh, letting me be here. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful to see quite a few people uh, interested in the outlook of what's happening in DevOps. Uh, what I'll do is, I think uh, uh, Niranjan gave a perfect segue into what the DevOps is going to be, uh, specifically uh, in the short term and in the long term. So uh, if you could get to the next slide. Yeah, so Niranjan gave a perfect segue saying a lot of SAP is now moving on to pure cloud uh, with even S4 getting to cloud, all the solutions are already on cloud. Um, so what is the transition path in terms of DevOps or how do you do management of transports or how do you do management of other solutions which you have built on top of your existing solutions? Maybe it is just a war file that we are developing or whatever that is. Uh, and that is a big concern because this transition is not going to happen, you know, I'll get up, wake up tomorrow morning and I'm on the cloud. There is a planned agenda behind which you need to be on both on-prem and cloud and then finally onto the cloud to reap all the benefits of the cloud. And that's what we call as hybrid designs here. One of the key aspects that is going to start happening in the next few months slash year or maybe even a little more than a year is as we transition into the cloud, you'll start seeing hybrid implementations. That is, we will see on-prem implementations side by side with cloud, uh, cloud uh, coexisting. Now, in such a scenario, one of the key things we need to start thinking about is how does DevOps happen? How do release cycles change my entire strategy? Because as Niranjan was mentioning, the cloud release cycles could be much shorter uh, whereas the on-prem release cycles could be much longer. On-prem could be completely in-house for you and cloud could be taken over partly by SAP or the partners uh, to run your uh, entire, entire IT landscape. So in such a scenario, how does communication happen between the two? Uh, how does release cycles get matched? All the other things that layer on top, especially if there's any specific implementations that you have done, how does that layering happen? And this is where uh, hybrid designs become a key factor that we need to consider in, in our journey towards uh, the cloud. Um, as we are going, the other thing that starts happening, and I think this has been told quite a few times and uh, I'm sure in the group here, everybody knows about it. But one of the things that we need to keep in mind is as we are going to the cloud, uh, the uh, enablement of security has to increase not just from an application sense, but even from a release sense. Uh, you could have malicious attacks happening just because there is a, a unchanged release cycle or an unseen release cycle just pending sitting somewhere. Or maybe a nightly build has failed and nobody gets to know about it uh, on, on a small little uh, unit test sitting somewhere, but uh, the impact could be that somebody has been able to socially engineer and get into your build and, uh, get your data out. So security DevSecOps is going to become more and more stringent as we go along. And you're going to see more and more investment of time, energy, money, resources, everything into that, uh, because the cloud is here to stay, not just in terms of uh, solutioning, but in terms of even the kind of operational excellence or the security aspects that come in. So anything related to that has to get enhanced also. Uh, and what it, when I mean anything related to that is anything related to the tool chain that is leading into, uh, in, into the uh, cloud environment is what starts getting focused upon from a security perspective. Not just from a security perspective, but we need better tool chains to happen. Um, being in an on-prem world, I started my life in R3. Uh, and when you look at the entire tool chain, right from 
how uh, how a, a table change can happen how the whole thing can be transported or how code change can happen and how transport could work or how data change can happen and transport could work if you see the entire tool chain was so beautifully designed that the uh, the the entire system could be moved on just transports but with hybrid landscapes coming up with the option of choosing your own hyperscalers that you are on uh, with the option of choosing some of your own programming languages that you would like to extend your uh, core solution with, uh, be it on SAP Cloud Platform or be it on BTP or be it on any other uh, approaches that you have, uh, we need a very comprehensive tool chain availability to kind of merge all these changes, uh, ensure that there are no clashes in the changes or sequentially manage these changes in a much richer way. So one of the things apart from security that is going to start getting built around this is the tool chains are going to become more complex. Uh, they're going to get better, of course, and they're going to be even more automated than what it is today. Uh, taking a simple example, uh, if, you, if you look at how today uh, a simple example of a Jamstack works, wherein uh, you're just building a simple website, making a static HTML out of it and deploying it onto uh, providers like Netlify, or providers like DigitalOcean, the entire experience is extremely smooth. You just have to give a GitHub repo link and the whole thing is done. Uh, there's no human intervention involved in any kind of even uh, simple standardized checks like say accessibility or image resizing and stuff like that. So this is now going to flow into the enterprise world also. This has been done on a very small scale for static websites, but this same approaches or concepts can be taken into the uh, enterprise world and we can have a much better tool chain on an end-to-end basis. Now, why is this becoming so important? Why is tool chain suddenly uh, an important factor here? Of course, security is important, hybrid is important, uh, but why tool chains? One of the key aspects, if you have been seeing in the last few months, even from an SAP perspective that's happening is we are moving towards low code or no code environments. A lot of the uh, microservices that are getting developed uh, are getting developed natively within SAP, within SAP partners, but orchestrating these services together and connecting these services sometimes into varied landscapes, uh, which exist in, uh, in customer systems or customer landscapes, we are offering low code and no code approaches. So what do I mean by that? Low code and no code is practically uh, places where you can drag drop, put things together and orchestrate things if necessary, or even with minimal amount of coding, something uh, just to give you a parallel example of it for people who are not aware, uh, something similar to how an Excel sheet, small little code that you write uh, works, the same kind of coding could be done at an enterprise scale. Now, when these kind of elements start coming in, wherein you are developing via low code, no code environments, uh, release management DevOps becomes extremely crucial and critical because A, uh, there is no planned effort that is going into making scrum cycles happen. Because in a typical scrum cycle, you have a developer developing something, a tester testing, and then the release happening. So there's a certain gated quality that is already there. And in spite of that, uh, you see a lot of DevOps uh, issues and you see a lot of uh, management issues that need to be handled. Uh, when you go into low code, no code environments, the system is generating a lot of the code that is there already. Now, any kind of failures along the way, be it in terms of uh, code transports or be it in terms of build checks or data checks that happen has to be literally alerted on the fly so that you know that your no code or low code scenario, no code scenario has failed uh, right up to the pipeline and production and not just in, you know, in a QA system or a dev system. So uh, as, the, as, as you start seeing uh, more and more uh, business power users starting to code and use applications or build applications by themselves uh, using these methodologies, the, the entire DevOps cycle also gets into those formats, which wasn't there earlier. Uh, and it becomes a, a, crucial part of, uh, a crucial part of how we handle things. Which brings me to the topic of how does this whole how does this whole thing work? Because uh, you have development happening, you have business power users building applications, small little pieces together. Now, how does all this come together? Uh, what, what is the crucial aspect of it? Well, 
very soon we'll have to start seeing that a lot of test rigs are getting built. Uh, like in any other industry, if, if you come from uh, mechanical or electrical industries, before you actually uh, implement a certain machinery in production, there's a lot of, there's a test rig which does the entire testing on certain graded parameters. And DevOps would become the start point for all these test rigs to uh, kind of, you know, spin up, start testing, and then move the cycles onto the next test rig and the next test rig. So we could have uh, test rigs for load testing. We could have test rigs for functional correctness. We could have test rigs for performance. Uh, and each of these test rigs, the entire lifecycle management of these uh, and flow between these would become a part of the DevOps and the release cycles that are there. So you'll start seeing that as the, the amount of code that is getting generated is not just by development, but by power users is going up. The amount of testing that needs to be done has to be more stringent, more harder uh, to ensure enterprise grade quality. So for that reason, we'll start seeing test rigs coming up and the flow between these test rigs is very, very crucial. Yeah. Of course, there are a few other things that I'll quickly cover upon is edge computing is becoming a reality. So you are going to be seeing IoT more and more. We speak to a lot of customers who are uh, having investment in large IoT projects where they want to cover their entire uh, uh, their, their entire factory production flows with sensors all over the place, uh, get data every once in 10 minutes, every once in 15 minutes, so on and so forth from different types of sensors. Now, how do we do uh, any kind of change management in these kind of environments wherein uh, data flow is extremely, extremely high, uh, and but the data volumes are extremely small? Uh, how do you do uh, change management there? That becomes a good uh, uh, problem to solve. Yeah. Uh, on the on the further end, uh, and this is something that is very close to my heart, is chaos engineering. And uh, I uh, we, we have a separate program in our academy teaching chaos engineering to our architects and engineers, uh, where we actually focus on bringing production systems down in a very or orchestrated way to ensure that our resiliency is there, not just from a, a software sense of being resilient, but also from our process sense and people sense of being resilient. Uh, and uh, that is going to become a part of DevOps, as in uh, how, how do you bring these kind of process flows and how do you uh, uh, handle change management in these process flows would become a, a, good, uh, a good focal area in the next coming years. Of course, at the end of the whole thing, we have uh, AI quantum, which is out there in the future. Uh, but one of the things that we need to kind of focus on as we go along is move away from just having thresholds to moving to seeing trends and correlations and why failures occur. Uh, and actually that would lead to a smarter management of how DevOps is. I think covering all these aspects into one platform is what could, the, could be the challenge. And I think Release Owl is... Uh, looking at different aspects of it. So probably Niranjan, you can kind of color the topic a little more than what I can as to how uh, you're seeing it from a platform perspective. Yeah, wonderful, Jayant. Um, that was really, really insightful. And um, the aspects of chaos engineering, test rigs, um, the tool chains, yeah, they are the order of the day. And um, I fully agree with you. Um, in terms of um, devs have cops taking priority as we go um, into much more sophisticated change and release management and much more um, shorter release cycles. So um, that was very insightful and um, thank you, Jain, for this. And definitely with release all, as you rightly uh, mentioned, um, our aim is to have one platform, uh, one DevOps platform um, that ensures uh, the DevOps, the packaging, the deployment, um, the audit, traceability testing um, for both SAP on-premise, that is where most of the current investment of customers is, and the future, which is where customers are migrating. I don't say future, I would say it is a um, bit of current and bit of future because there is significant uh, year on year, uh, there is wonderful acquisition of cloud um, that is already happening, and it will only increase in the next couple of years. And that is the motivation or that is the vision um, of release owl. I see some questions coming in. Uh, so I let the questions uh, be 
taken probably in the last 10 minutes so please keep your questions coming in and we will reserve probably last 10 minutes for exclusively for the q and a even 10 to 15 minutes so let me now uh, move forward uh, with uh, what are we trying to do with release all why should we you have a product like release all in the first place let's let's try to get there um, the biggest uh, thing that we announced uh, last month is uh, the one devops platform so we have transport management there are um, tools that are around for transport management and we started originally on cloud because we see that's the future sap cloud is amazing and uh, more and more customers are uh, are boarding the journey of cloud and we we want it to be the devops platform for sap cloud and the biggest feedback that we received um, last year um, during our proof of concepts and implementations was uh, wonderful um, um, it does a lot of good things for cloud but uh, we want to have one central tool chain for both sap on prem and um, cloud so that our investments are aligned in in one direction and that is where we took a step back taking customer feedback and then by brought in the aspect of one platform for both on prem and cloud be it your transport management be it your cpi be it your web app cloud or be it your ui apps or the um, cloud apps which have your warp files or mtop whatever um, release all is positioned as one devops platform now very quickly going through high level features um, ci cd pipelines that is the uh, the core functionality uh, of release all where you can create a uh, packaging um, you can create artifacts the unit test code coverage and then uh, publish the artifacts in artifact store run your deployment pipelines release pipelines across multiple stages uh, so the end to end from a developer working in his editor or her editor to all the way to the production land production part um, it is all automated in release all then orchestrated workflows it is not just an automation product that we have built it has very rich orchestration because if you really look at an enterprise class sap it is not just about deploying something it is about a team that is approving or a manager that is approving a deployment then doing the deployment and then somebody gets a task to verify the sanity check and the, and the say um, we are talking about qa then they once the lead approves the deployment happens the qa team the sanity check sign off and then the business users are notified and they give an approval for deployment to deploy into the uat or stage and then take it to pre prod or prod so all this orchestration is built into the product and that helps you to model your uh, release process effectively early warning i always talk about um, not just responsibility but give power to developers they will produce high quality code this has been right from two decades of my devops the the motivation that drives me in this is the tooling gives power to developers and when developers have power to produce quality code they'll do it so it's not just about giving some 20 instructions on how they can write code give them tools that they can they can freely check in their code verify it against the compliance standards security standards quality standards get a report submit it for peer review and they are done they go peacefully they sleep in the night finally any devops tool um, uh, as jayant was also mentioning about the importance of audit importance of security and importance of traceability is extremely high the moment a component is modified at the moment the component is deployed at any point of time there has to be a solid trace back on which user story did this who did this into which environment at what time who approved it this is the audit trail that happens especially in case if there is any um, critical error that occurred it is important to trace back as quickly as possible um, not just to identify someone but it's also about fixing it faster that's how you look at it so uh, release all comes with rich audit and traceability capabilities so let me quickly um, take the next 4 to 5 minutes on walking the flows that we have 
as i mentioned one of the important aspect of release all in addition to having a rich ci cd automation is well defined workflows for each of your flavors you are on on prem there is a workflow you are using cloud mtap you have a workflow you are on abap cloud steampunk you have a workflow you are using you are not on cloud at all and you are uh, or you are you are on cpi you are using iflows and value streams you have a workflow so we have established clear um, workflows for each of these flavors so that teams can onboard straight away on based on how you want to use the product so first is about um, the cloud applications wherein developer works in eclipse pushes the changes into git here we take um, the build pipelines uh, take git as their source of truth and build pipeline typically creates an mta package runs the unit test runs the static code analysis creates artifact publishes an artifact store and as developers keep pushing changes build pipeline keeps running once you define a pipeline as a setup activity you can keep running it or a webhook can automatically trigger it to do all the uh, core developer friendly uh, developer uh, side of it in terms of building and packaging and publish the artifact in artifact store now if you have a milestone in the sprint a qat or a uat a qa or uat or a stage you can have one release pipeline created for each stage or one pipeline that does multi stage deployment also as part of setup and you can keep running that pipeline a, a, a stage typically consists of a pre deployment step which is optional wherein you can set it up for approval and a deployment step and then you have a post deployment step again optional that you can um, set any manual task or send it for uh, any sign offs and as this deployments happen it will be reflecting in the release all dashboard real time if you are on on premise not using gates and sap cloud and you want to under and that's a fair expectation for most of the customers today so we have built again a solid workflow um, we have given an aspect of projects and user stories even for customers who are on waterfall using transports um, we it is important that you are able to trace it back to requirement that is where we have given a capability in as as a change management module in the product that you can start associating user stories to your transports if you are using jira then uh, that will also um, you can import those jira stories into the product so this is what project manager typically does uh, create stories of thank you developer um for each user story the basis admin can create transports assign the user story and let the not development team notify that hey here is a story this is the transport for this story now go ahead and start doing the magic so developer work on the user story create tasks complete that work releases the task and then informs the basis team that this transport is ready so then they release the transport so whatever black lines that you see they are all in release all the magic the developers does to produce good quality code is what they will continue to do and once the transport is released release manager as part of initial setup we create a pipeline with all the approval process and everything it's one time activity for each stage and then uh, assuming that the transport is done and you have a milestone so the project manager will create a release plan a release plan with approved user stories that means you know that out of the 10 user stories that are there in the sprint these four are ready to go and now release manager can run the release pipeline with the top road plan and then run it to deploy to qa send it to qa for approval deploy to prod i have not put multiple stages but you can set it up the way you want and sign off so on this note uh, similarly free for cpi that is not at live on geos and um, uh, you can pretty much synchronize there is a cpi management interface in release out wherein you can fetch your i flows value streams synchronize them and then create with a version and then save it um, in release out and then you can pretty much deploy that flows as and when you want you can attach user stories to these flows and you can create a release plan to the user stories and deploy the release plan so uh, you have out of the box support 
for cloud applications, for ABAP cloud, on-premise, and CPI. So I just take a moment uh, to go to the application and then uh, walk you through some of these capabilities. So what you see on the screen is um, release all dashboard. There are these broadly, you see um, two sections, change management, build, release and configuration. So, so the first thing is configuration, very minimal configuration. Uh, you just need to set up your landscape here, your SAP cloud environment. You can click register the SAP cloud, um, just choose your region and then uh, you, you give your SAP credentials, they are stored in credential managers. And then as you give it, um, it will auto-populate the org, the spaces, and then you can register your cloud space eventually. So all this is pretty much automated and you can register it very little effort. Um, if you have ABAP cloud on top of your SAP cloud, you have ABAP environment. You need to register those ABAP environment. So here we set up our cloud environment, and then it will start populating your instance service keys, and you choose your um, ABAP instance, and then, and then register your ABAP environment. That is for those customers who want to um, do release management of your ABAP cloud. If we have very, very good functional, the entire Steampunk, um, Steampunk flows are all modeled in release out. Um, if you are on on-premise, we have transport domain controller where you can register your transport domain controller. And once you register your controller, entire landscape will be available for um, the entire target systems that are part of the domain controller will be available for you to package and deploy. This is quick configuration, minimal configuration. That is all what it takes for you. Uh, as Helen mentioned in the beginning, we are on SAP store. We are an application that is certified by SAP and it is published on SAP store. So you can just click on this app and it will be available for you. No need of installation has built in. Um, it is all available in the app store. So once you install, this is basic configuration. And now we going to the three important modules. The first is the change management module. This is where you see projects. Uh, either you can create projects here and while creating project, um, you can import. Uh, your project key from Jira, and you can start synchronizing those user stories from Jira into release all. And it is bi-directional, meaning you can update statuses from here to Jira, as well as as tickets change statuses in Jira, they will be reflecting here as well. Um, just to just to um, go there, uh, probably, oh, sorry, um, this panel is obstructing me a little bit. So this is our Jira board, where you have some of these prints. And if you want to see the user stories in the sprint, um, these are some of the user stories that are there. Six stories have come. I'll just select the Jira webinar demo and click go. I see six stories. Now, let's say there is suddenly a new story that has been created by the team. Now I just go ahead with the projects and then say click synchronize stories. So when I click this, so user stories think is complete. Now when I go here, I see the user story number seven coming in. So you can manage your user stories uh, within release out. Now, once you have these user stories in place, now it is all about making changes, building our artifacts and associating them to the user stories. That is where the build section comes. If you are on cloud, you have very nice looking build pipelines that you can use. So here uh, for cloud, we support MTAS, DCTS at this point. Um, so we select SAP cloud. Let's say I give a name, maybe no build pipeline one. Then I click next. I select my repository, which is Bitbucket. And then I choose my Bitbucket. Then I click next. It will give me in my Bitbucket list of repositories that are available. So I select my UI repository. Release all um, is a native SAP application. We use release all for release all. That means the changes that we develop on release all will be packaged and deployed through release all. So we look at the list of branches here. So we have an RO on RO branch where we package and deploy into all our jails. So I select release all and release all and I click next. The build up is MTA. I click next. We can set up manual schedule or webhook. Then I click next. 
for now convenience let me give my name tooling integration being a ui we have integration with sonar cube we select sonar cube if you have sonar cube on your on premise we can connect to it or we have a default credential um, default uh, provisioning that comes out of the box with your user subscription so i click review and this is what we have and um, i click submit then i just go ahead and um, click build now so let it run uh, it will take minutes it's our real um, the repository so while it runs let me walk through um, some of the pipelines that we have done this is for abap cloud and you can pretty much look here um, in terms of your prepared full repo from git and atc this is the quality um, the um, abap test cockpit which will give you information about the quality and the errors with respect to uh, uh, coding or performance will be listed here similarly if it is for um, mtar we can see um, the sonar cube report wherein you have um, a quality get and it tells us uh, if there are any bugs vulnerabilities code smell there are two bugs my team has introduced to something so let me just go ahead and see what is it so there is um, some uh, error is a major issue and it and it is marked as l64 so we can always look at it in education and then it shows where to fix it and the team can go ahead and resolve it or if you want to um, if you are more interested in security you can actually uh, get the security reports more aligned in terms of owasp or sans so this gives the developers more comfort that they can work on their ui or abap and then run release all build pipeline get the feedback that it is all good and then um, they can raise it with their leads to take the changes for release managers to take the changes forward similarly if you are on transport if you are not on cloud and using transport management this is something that should be very very familiar for you i may be new to this but not some of you uh, who have been in sap for years so we can create transport request right here by clicking create new transport request so you can give the standard information on the type of request and domain controller target system qe dev um, and then you can also associate as you select your project you can also associate the user stories of this particular project so this is where when creating a transport you are associating a user story that gives us traceability all the way as this transport keeps moving in the pipeline we know where through a user story we know uh, where this change has gone and the same will be reflected back into your jira as well let me look at um, the transports that are created so these are the transports and the green indicates that they are ready to go they are released and notified to basis administrator and, and then they are ready to go so this user story 2 and user story 4 are signed off and they are ready for me um, to promote it so how do i do that so last part comes as the release there are two aspects here release pipeline something that i've been talking about um, you can create very very comprehensive release pipelines um, in release hold again this is um, the one time activity that we do we'll set it up for each stage like 280 qa or if you want it advanced we set it up for multiple environments together so i just click create new release pipeline here i would say this is um, webinar release pipeline one I click next. Let's say I select it for on-premise. I've shown you for um, MTAR. Now I click next. What will be the project that I will use? This is the project, uh, Jira project that I'm using. And this is where I click add stage. I can add n number of stages in this pipeline. And I click add stage. Let's say this is for QA. And these are optional pre-deployment, post-deployment steps. I click OK. And we have a nice uh, pipeline and uh, wizard that has come. So first, I want it to be approved by approved by an individual and for the QA. And then this is for approval for a webinar deployment. And then the domain controller and target system is my QE. 
And where do I have these registered? I have them registered in my configuration section. After deployment, uh, for convenience, I am giving it to the same user. I don't need to log in multiple times. And then this is sanity checks. I go ahead, click step five, and notification. Again, I don't want to bombard your mailboxes right now. So I click next and click review. So this is what I have set up my pipeline. I can click add stage and add another stage also. So I click submit. This will create a release pipeline. This is my one step active, one time activity that I generally set up at the beginning of my release all implementation. We set up this pipeline. Okay. Now I have user stories created. Now I have transports created. Developers have worked on the transports. They are ready to go. So what is the process? Whether you use cloud, which is more of Git driven artifact management, or you use transports, or you use CPI, which is iFlows and value streams. They are all deployed by release pipelines only. And how do they get deployed? You associate the user stories to a release plan. So this is the release plan. For example, here you can see um, a release plan is a bundle that you create with a given set of approved user stories. Whether these user stories can be for transports, these user stories can be for your um, cloud application Git commits, or they can be your for your iFlows, any of them. You, you attach it to your release plan, you run your release pipeline. So, so here, for example, um, I see something fail. Let's just go ahead and see why this validation failed. Uh, somebody is trying to deploy something to UAT and I see a fail. And now I just go ahead and click on validation report. I see that there's a transport request. All right, this test success is 33, code coverage is 59. And this test case has failed. And this is the code coverage information and um, not a good sign. So definitely I will be rejecting this. I will not be progressing with this. Now, I assume that my developers have sorted it out. They are smart for sure. Otherwise, you would not have built this so, so fast. So I go ahead and click a new release plan. So I will give this is webinar um, release plan. And then I select my project. And let me click add user stories. These are all the user stories that are there. Let me select my user story four, uh, which has a transport and which is ready to go. So I select this user story and good, I'm good to go. So I have created my release plan. Now let's just go ahead. This is a small glitch with um, SAP. Sometimes you just need to refresh things. So sorry for that minor inconvenience. Let me just go here. Now I just go ahead and I validate this. I hope it gets validated. Yeah, this validation is successful. Now I am I can push this up. So now let me just go to my release pipeline I just created for webinar. I run this pipeline. This is for my UAT sprint one. This helps you to audit better. So you run your release pipeline with clear release plans and cycle names. So I select my uh, webinar release plan. I go ahead and check that job. So this has kicked off my release. I had transports that are ready to go. I added them to a transport as part of release plan. Now I run a release pipeline attaching this plan. The pipeline has all the approvals. So now real quick, um, let me let me log into in a new incognito window. Let me log into uh, Let me just um, open my browser again. The Zoom panel is. So let me open a new incognito window wherein um, I will log in. And then I will approve it. So let me just real quick um, get my URL back. So I'm logging in as your user QA test.
and I click login. So the last section that you will see uh, once you log in is um, here, um, my tasks. This is where any approvals that has come for me are available here. Webinar RP1, UIT Sprint 1, QA approval has, has come for me for approval for webinar deployment. I'm kind enough to approve this. So I have done this approval. Now, let me just go back to the product. Uh, let me just um, open, the browser, open the application in the browser. So now what you see is in the dashboard, um, you see that this, this is in waiting state, the webinar RP1, and as we go to the release plan, um, so release pipeline, we see that this is waiting. If you want to take details, you can always click and see. The precondition is done, deployment is complete, and logs will be available here. This transport request of this particular user story ID has been deployed. Wonderful. Now, post condition, again, this is waiting for someone to approve. So let me just go ahead and then approve this. This action has come now, a sanity check, and I'm a superhuman being where I can do approvals and complete my sanity checks. I've done that. Now, what you see here is the cycle is successfully complete. So it is as straight as that. You can create release pipelines, and then you can create um, build pipelines. You can manage your transports, all of them at one place. So this is where I'll sign off. Audit trial is there where you can pretty much um, show um, everything. Uh, let's say from February 1st, um, what has come into my UAT. It will all show it here. Probably the teams have cleaned things up for this demo. Uh, anyways, um, so moving, moving on. This is what I wanted to talk through you today. And um, ROI is something that is significant. Let me just take, we have probably five minutes and there are some questions that have come. And uh, please feel free to post your questions here and I will be happy to um, assist. Now, question number one, um, uh, why this DevOps, the solution manager will become obsolete? Very, very good question. The solution manager is an offering from SAP. Uh, those customers who are using it for their on-premise needs, they can continue to use. Um, with Relly well, we are trying to bring in a complete platform, DevOps platform uh, flavor, wherein you have unit testing, code coverage, approval, deployment for on-prem, cloud, uh, CPI. So we are trying to make it much more robust. And uh, I request the users to be on mute. Um, test tricks is nothing but unit and um, integration testings. Um, so, Jay, do you want to really take a minute to explain this? Uh, what exactly are test rates? It's a great question. Yeah. Let's come. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful question. Thank you for it. Uh, in, in a very simple way, unit and integration tests are important and are required at the lowest level. But when you are doing production grade changes and you're deploying very frequently, you need production type test rigs to test your actual uh, uh, performance, to test your actual loads that you can take and things like that. So test rigs are uh, which mimic production in a very, very close way uh, to test real world scenarios. Maybe we can have a more detailed uh, uh, conversation later. Uh, whoever has left it, if you can leave me your email ID, we could have a conversation later. Does release all provide a token for connecting SAP with ML tools? Yes, we have an API model. Yes, uh, answer is yes. It would have been useful if you can show end-to-end -end workflow for your DevOps process. Um, Sean, in the interest of time, I've gone through some of the capabilities. And please write, um, I will note down your email and we will have a deep down of the product. Um, how about code quality? Um, does release all as its own rule sets, leverage as sectional tools? We have VU leverage external tools like SonarCube, um, ATC, and we are also working with check marks to integrate it. What are your new uh, upcoming things? So <laughs> this is a good question. So what you can expect from next webinar. So this is um, CPI is something that is exciting, coming, shaping up very well. And we are also into DevOps, um, sorry, a data ops. So, so to 
push your data into lower environment and integrations with service now azure devops are also on the pipeline so we are raising at this time and you will see more and more exciting stuff from us and how devops is different from agile scrum methodology um, devops um, will make sure agile is successful because devops brings in automation and uh, uh, it comes with principles of faster change management which is also the backbone of agility so i would say it is not different it's the backbone of agile DevOps is a practice of bringing develop. Okay, somebody else. Um, I've been being um, in SAP for a bit. Is there any code versioning, branching, merging functionality either directly in SAP or through release? Or it looks like SAP can interact with Git, which would give you branching. But my experience is primarily excellent. This is a great question, um, Andy. Um, with ABAP Cloud, and then um, you are even SAP Cloud applications. Um, you have Git support, but there is no out of the box match functionality inside uh, release all or SAP. And the match functionality is expected to be for the steampunk sometime coming to third quarter or maybe end of this year. That is what I read in the blogs. But you can always use Git track and um, some of the tools out there for your matches and all that. Release all has separate user license. Yes, we have user subscriptions. Um, um, that you can that you can purchase, you can uh, uh, we can have separate conversation. This is more from um, the education side. Uh, DevOps educate does DevOps have potential ticketing system? Yes, we do have change management system in the product out of the box. I have seen um, uh, yes, I have received your, your email, Rajeshwar girl. Definitely, um, we will reach out to you. Any documentation, um, any certifications, knowledge. Um, Bhavit, another wonderful question. Um, the, uh, uh, we will get there some point of time. And that's where right till then, someone like Giant, uh, we will take his help and his guidance to uh, spread the knowledge about DevOps and certifications. But um, at some point, we'll release all has its own academy. Um, uh, probably within SAP, if there's a space that we can have, uh, why not? Uh, we will have. And then this is for you. Probably next time when we meet, um, you need to answer this for me. <laughs> Absolutely. It will be wonderful yeah. to work together on these uh, on, on some of these topics. Yeah. Um, so we are on time. Uh, we respect your time for today. And um, Helen, it's very late for you. I think midnight and thunderstorms in the background. Um, you have been a great partner. Uh, manager for us, partner director for us. Thank you so much. Um, Jayant, um, again, wonderful to keep conversing with you on this topic. We will continue to be in touch. Audience, um, uh, from I have seen some allied customers joining today, and I really thank you um, for taking your valuable time and attending this panel discussion. Um, thank you, and the webinar recording will be available to you probably uh, by tomorrow. And if in case of more details or more questions or more deep dive or with your use cases, you have sales at releaseall.com. Uh, please send an email and um, our team will be with you. Thank you. We are closing this webinar now. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Kiranjan. It's very great opportunity to hear about us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice day.